Hello, everyone. In this video, I would like to discuss how can we implement the sequence control by using case instruction and use the back of TwinCat3 software to implement this sequence control. In the previous video, we introduced how can we set up this sequence control by case of this instruction. And we left 35 steps, and those step number will be used to control the four cylinders as an automatic sequence. We also introduced how can we set up the timer between the step to next step. That timer we can set 2 seconds or 5 seconds. It's better for us to diagnose or do the initial test for the sequence control. In the previous video, I also used this quick connector as our application background. The basic sequence to make this part. The first step, the operator will load this housing into the machine. And once the machine checks the part present, so the sequence will start. The first step, we will load the part. C cylinder A will load the part into this uh, quick connector. For example, that's O ring or retainer. And next step, the clamp B will close that used to hold the part. After the clamp B hold the part, the cylinder C will start to press coming down. That is a step 15. And after the press closed at a step 25, the heater controlled by the cylinder D will close to heat the part or punch the part to do a mark on the part. And eventually step 30, so both cylinder C and D will retract, go home. So basically that time the entire sequence is finished. We will use this application as our background. And in this video, I will mainly introduce how can we use this sequence number to control the valve automatic control. You will find with this sequence number, the automatic control will become very easy. In the previous video, I demonstrated to allow this sequence move step by step. So we need to trigger this task done. This task done signal represent the current step is finished and then using the timer two seconds or five seconds after so we will move to the next step so if we join the valve control and this sequence together that means the valve control feedback uh, for example the center a or center b at home or at work this signal we need to use the cylinders feedback use the logic combine them together control this task then to allow this step move to the next step and then use the sequence number to control the valve bank. This is a quick review. So let's shift to the TwinCat 3 software and let me show how can we use the step number to control the valve and how can we use the valve feedback home at work those signal feedback to involve together to control the task done to allow the sequence step move step by step. All right, this is the old picture of this sequence. Okay, now we finish the sequence control program, step zero to step 30. And to assemble this housing part, so firstly, operator will load the housing first. The operator will pump this button. And once the machine check the part present, after pump, it will move to the step five. At this step five, the machine will control the cylinder A to load some parts within this uh, housing. And after this, we move to the step 10. At step 10, we work this climb, allows this climb to hold this part. And once the climb reached the work position, so we move to the step 15. At this step 15, we need to home this cylinder A, retract this uh, cylinder A back home. And meantime, this climb B is still at work to hold this part. At this time, at the step 15, so meantime, we need to work this price. Basically, that means when the B holding this part, the price from the top will come down to cream this part. So at this step 15, we need to do home this A, keep this uh, center B at work, and meantime, we need to work this uh, price. We need to work this uh, price cylinder C. And after this, we move to the step 20. At the step 20, the C is at work. And after we move to the next step, after the C at work position, that time we can home the center B. 
So at step 20, we need to home the cylinder B. At step 25, at that time, the cylinder C, the price, still price this part. And meantime, we will work this cylinder D. You can imagine the cylinder D is holding one heater. The heater gun will go to work position and go to heat this housing for 10 seconds. There is one timer here. And after the 10 seconds, we need to home this price and home this cylinder D together. Basically, we finish this whole sequence. So this is the entire sequence. We can see if we use a single logic to control the cylinder work home, it's really complex. But if we use a sequence control, it will become very easy. I will show how can we program now. So firstly, let's focus on this A. To make this cylinder A to go work, so step 5 and step 10 will control the cylinder A at work. And once we reach this step 15, so the A need to go home. So let's go to the valve control program and the program this cylinder A control. Okay, firstly, let me go to the logout and let me go to this uh, valve control. Let's move to the valve control, this program. Oh, we haven't declared the valve tag yet. So let me go to the GVL and create one page named global variable list and rename it as a valve, VAL. And at here, we can declare the valve signal. So firstly, that is a bool valve underscore A work command. And this command will go to connect the IO output to control the valve go to work position. Okay. And similar way, valve underscore A home command. This command turn on will fire the cylinder go to home position. Meantime, we need to declare the feedback at work and at home, at work, sensor. And wow, A at home sensors. Sensor. At work sensor. Mm. And we can build. Okay, those are the signal for one valve. So work command is used to control the valve A to go work. And at work sensor, that is the feedback signal when the valve at work position. Okay, this is for one valve. Following this way, we need to prepare four valves. Okay, we finished the declare. So we prepare four signals for each valve. We have a totally four valves here. Okay, to control the cylinder A to work when the step at five at 10, so let's go to the valve control program and to control the work command. Okay, let's use the if else. If the step number that is a seq dot this step number, step number. So if this step number equal to step five or this step number equal to step 10. Once this step at a five or at a 10, so we need to type in SQQ. So we will turn on this valve A work command to true. In the meantime, we need to turn that home command to false. Okay. And don't forget, so when this valve need to go home, except this 5 and 10, 
other time, other steps, we need to turn this uh, valve A to go home, right? So at this uh, else, we need to turn this work to false and turn this home to go true. Okay, so else we need to delete this. Uh, all right, that is the sequence control to control this valve A, go work and go home. And this could be the command actually to control this valve uh, behind, we also need uh, the manual control and the auto control. Uh, this work command can be used as uh, one part of the automatic control to control this valve A. To control an individual valve, we could use the file run logic to control. You can search the file run logic. And this uh, valve A work command or home command can be used as uh, the automatic command to control the valve within the five runs. Okay. To simple demonstrate to control this valve, we use this work command, home command, to, to control the valve directly. Okay, so this is the valve A. To control the cylinder B, the climb, the cylinder B, the climb, need to turn work when the step at 10 and at 15. So we will use a similar way to control the cylinder B. Okay, so we can copy this and we can mark this is a valve A, and this is valve B. So B, we need to turn the B when the step number at 10 or the step 15, right? And this time, this is a B. Okay, this is the valve B control. When the step number at 10 or at 15, so we need to turn this uh, valve B to work. And other steps, this valve B will go home. The home command will turn on. Okay, let's review the cylinder C, this press. This press need to go work when the step at 15, 20, and 25. So I will use a similar way, copy this B to program C. Okay, so when the step at 15, 20, and 25, we need to turn the C work to true. Instead of using this uh, equal, we can also use this. So when the step number greater or equal to 15, or and this step number less than the 25 using this way and this is a C and take care here so if you use the individual step number uh, basically we will use or or all the conditions the step number here another way actually it makes it easier that is this so use the greater equal or less than equal and use the end make sure that is only within this step number to turn this C, the turn the valve turn on or turn off. Okay, to control this cylinder D, this heater, this cylinder D will go work at step 25. To implement this timer, we will use the step transition timer from step 25 to step 30. We will use that timer, the timer between the 25 and the 30, that transition timer to control this 10 seconds. So that makes it easier, only use 25, this step number to control this heater, cylinder D, go work. So let's go back. Cylinder D, that is will be only at 25. Okay, so basically we finished this logic for control the valve. We can see to control a valve, go work or go home, that is very easy. 
you only need to take care of which step the valve need to go home or which step need to go work. So this is a step number here. So we can see the logic is very clear. If this valve B cannot be turned on, so you can jump here and check out what the current step number is running. Maybe the step number that time is at a five, it's stuck at a five. That's why, so this valve B is at home, it's controlled to go home. And you can check out why, what the reason that step number is at a five rather than 10. And that time you can jump to the sequence control and check out the conditions at here. We haven't programmed yet. So this is the idea, and that is the beauty to use the sequence control. So when you check out what the reason to cause this valve do some wrong job or do some weird task, uh, so you can go back to this sequence, check out what's going on within this sequence. And the rest of the task, we need to program the conditions to turn this task done. So if we review, if this step at five, we work this cylinder A. After this cylinder A at work, we shift to the next step. So that means the center A at work will be the condition move from the step five to step 10. So the condition, the center A at work, this condition will be the key condition moving this step five to step 10. So using this way, if go back to here, that step five, this task done condition. So we will use the valve dot valve A at work, this is sensor, okay? In the meantime, we can type in some description here. So like here, this is step five. And at this step, we need to work this cylinder A. At this step, what the actual production task, the actual production task is a loading parts to housing, right? Okay. And then we move to the next step. Let's review. So at step 10, we need to work the cylinder A and B. A and B at work at the same time. To move to the next step, the cylinder A and B, they need to at work together, right? That is the condition to move from 10 to 15. So that time the climb B is closed. So let's go back. If come here, let's program this condition. So this condition to move to the next step, that is uh, the valve, valve A at work, and valve B at work. Okay, at this step, we can program step 10, work, cylinder B. So from production wheel, we can type in clamp housing. Okay, step 15. Uh, let's see, at step 15, we need to work this price C. At step 15, we need to work this uh, cylinder C, this price. In the meantime, we need to home this uh, cylinder A. From 15 to step 20, we need to check out if cylinder A at home. In the meantime, if this price C at work. Also, B should at work. So let's go to the logic. At this uh, step 15, the cylinder A need at home, but the cylinder B and the C the at work. So B still at work. And C at work. This allows the sequence step move from 15 to 20. Okay, at this step, 
we can type in cylinder C and home cylinder A. So the production task that is uh, the cream, the part, the housing, cream the housing price. So that is a price or cream the housing. Okay. Then step 20, we need to keep this cylinder C at work position. Meantime, we need to home this cylinder B, this climb. So we need to check out if the cylinder B at home, and then we can move to the 25 step. At this step 20, so we need to check out if the cylinder B at home. So we need to check out if there's a cylinder B, if the cylinder B at home. Once the cylinder B at home, so we can move to the next step. So at this step, home, cylinder B. So the task, the production task of this step, this is a, that is open the climb. Open climb, okay. Once it's the climb at home, totally opened, so we move to the next step. Uh, this uh, step 25, we can see. Once this uh, sequence reach this uh, 25, we need to work this uh, cylinder D. Uh, you can imagine this uh, cylinder D is uh, picking one heater, and this cylinder will go approach this uh, part to heat this uh, part. So the heater will take 10 seconds here. And to work this cylinder D, that step number is 25. So after this cylinder D at work for 10 seconds, we can move to the next step. So let me show how can we program this. So the conditions for this uh, step 25 task done, that is a cylinder D at work. So firstly, I will program this cylinder D at work. Meantime, the cylinder C also at work. So D and C, they all at work. And once this task done turn on, so we need to turn this cylinder D at work for 10 seconds to heat the part. So how can we control the timer? We can use the timer for this step behind that 25. If we go back to this sequence condition, keep in mind that is a 25 step. So we can change this timer at 25 from two seconds default to 10 seconds. Change this. That means once this task done, 25 is turned on, we wait for 10 seconds. Okay, come here. So between this uh, task done and this uh, delay done, the timer that is uh, 10 seconds. In step 30, we will home the cylinder D. So the timer between the 25 and 30, this allows this cylinder D keep at a work position for 10 seconds. And after this 10 seconds, we move to the next step. At the next step, step 30, we will home the cylinder C and D. Step 25, we need to work. Cylinder, we need to work this cylinder D. So the production task at this step, that is a heat housing for 10 seconds. And once after 10 seconds is to the step 30. So at this step, basically we home everything, home C and D. And once C and D at home, so basically this whole sequence done. So the condition means this is 30 done, that is a C and D at home, okay? C and D at home.
So once the C and the D, they both at home, that means this uh, step 30 is totally complete. And after two seconds or without any time delay, so this 30 delay done, it will reset everything and jump back to the beginning, the step zero. So add here and let's type in the comments. So step 30. We need to home cylinder C and cylinder D. Okay, and once the C and the D at home, so this is the actual sensor feedback. So we move to the beginning. It means we need to stop, stop heat open climb the stop heat and open climb basically return all the tools okay so when we jump back to zero let's review this zero so at zero we can see what the condition can control the step from zero to five that is the initial condition. So basically for the machine at the beginning to control from zero to the further step, we need to check out if all the tools are at home position to move forward. This home, you can define some tools, uh, maybe the sensor turn on means at home, or sometimes the sensor turn off that at home. So in my case, all those valve A, B, C, D, those signal should add a home sensor. So firstly, I will define one tag, that means the home. So let me go to the valve and create another tag. That is B valves at home. B all valves at home. So and Let's go to this condition. Okay, so to use this all valve at home, we can use val dot all valve at home capital. Other than this all valve at home, basically we also need two other conditions. Firstly, we need to guarantee the part is present or the housing is present, right? The firstly. You can imagine the first step, the operator need to load this uh, housing into this machine. So there will be a sensor check if there's a housing present. We, another thing is we need one button to initiate this uh, whole sequence. And once this sequence coming back, we need the operator to reload one new part and pump out the button to allow this uh, sequence to start. We do not want the sequence run again and again to redo this part, right? We need a uh, two another signals. So let me create two another signals. That signals is a, a cell signal. So I will create a one page named the cell. And within this cell, I will name it, firstly, that is a pump button. Uh, next one, that is a housing present. Basically, these two signals will be connected to the actual sensor input signal. So the input module signal will be used to connect this uh, pump out button and the housing present. They all directly come from the sensor signal. Okay, go back to this uh, sequence control. And here, firstly, all the valve at home and the condition cell dot, this housing need to be present. After this present, we also need uh, the operator to pump out the button to start this, uh, initiate this sequence. So, and use this pump out button. And for most of the machine, this pump out button also will be used to reset the safety. Um, basically, when the operator loads a part, he will break the light curtain. So this pump button will be also used to reset the light curtain. And once the light curtain clear, if the safety is okay, in the meantime, when there's a sequence to start, so to fire this uh, valve A, all the things will start to move. 
and add this a uh, step zero. This is a uh, initial start. And meantime, it's home all valves. And when this step at a zero, if we reveal these uh, conditions, so when the step at a zero, basically those logic will control the valves go home. This allows when the sequence at a zero, basically all the command to control the valves, they go home. And if all the valve at a home position, we start from the beginning and we check out the housing present. Once they all good, so once we pump this button, turn on, this sequence will move forward. Okay, till here, basically we finish this two main part. One is the sequence control, one is the valve control. So to demonstrate, to make this system run, we need to create a one simulation program because now we are going to control the valve. We will fire this wall command to turn on. However, that at work sensor signal will not turn on because we don't have the actual devices. So I will program one simulation program, basically demonstrate when we turn on this work command. And this work command will directly turn this at work sensor to on. That is just a simulation program. In actual case, that simulation program will not be used. Okay, so at here, I will create another simulation program. Let's call it valve simulation. So for the valve A, valve dot A at work sensor will directly equal to command, will directly equal to the valve home command, valve home command. And the same thing, valve this, Valve A at work sensor will directly equal to this Valve A work command. So this basically demonstrate or simulate that device is moving, right? If we fire go home, so we directly give a feedback at home. If we fire go work, we direct feedback at work. You can also put a timer here to demonstrate that simulate the valve need one second to reach at home or to reach at work position. Okay. Uh, okay, we will use the similar logic for B, C, and D. Okay, so those signal will be used to demonstrate to simulate the sensor turn on. Okay, to run this uh, valve simulation, we need to go to the main and call this uh, valve simulation. Okay, let's come here to call that valve simulation bracket. We finish this two main program. Also, we add this uh, valve simulation, allows this sequence can go move forward and forward. Till here, we basically finish all the sequence program. So we can compile and download. I'm going to build the solution, check out if there's some error here. Okay, no errors. I'm going to download the program, click this login. And if you're using one actual controller, check out this. So update boot project. If you uncheck this box and click the OK, you can still download the program. However, once you cycle power the controller, and once the controller boot up, so you will find the new download logic will be lost. This could be used for logic test only. So once we cycle power the controller, the changes will be lost just for temporary use, temporary test. So make sure you check this update the boot project. Once we click the OK, it will download the program. And once you reboot your controller, your new download program will be stayed in your controller. Okay, currently this step number stay at zero. And at a zero, that will show, so this a sequence step description will show initial start, home, all values. And the system is waiting for the valve at home and housing present and the palm out button, waiting for these three conditions. Firstly, let's check out this, all valve at home 
we haven't programmed this condition yet. First, let's go to this valve control. And at the end of this valve control, I need to program this condition. All valve at home equal to, this is full valve all at home. So I need to program this. So valve A at home and valve B at home and valve C at home and valve D at home. Okay, we need to involve those four cylinders, four valves at home condition. So download. Okay, let's go back to this uh, sequence control. Now, all the valve initial, they all at home. So it's coming true. It's waiting for the operator to load the housing into the machine and waiting for the palm out button. So to demonstrate this uh, signal, I will use this uh, watch table. Regarding this watch table, you can go to the PLC, click this uh, watch one, two, three, four, select one of them. And at here, I will type in, prepare those signals we need to test. Firstly, I need to watch the current description, the step number. So this is step number. And uh, I will prepare this step description. So we can see the actual status of the step. We can see which step we add. And this, I will demonstrate this part present. And I will prepare this uh, palm out button. So meantime, I will also prepare the full, uh, also meantime, I will also prepare this four valves at work condition. So we will see the valve. So the valve A at work. Valve A at home. Valve B at work. Valve B at work. At home. Valve C at work. Valve C at home. Valve D at work. Valve D at home. Okay. This is the value. If we need to set something, we can type in the value as it's a prepared value. So now I will demonstrate we load the part, load this housing in the machine. And after this load, I will palm out this button. So firstly, I will turn this housing present on click and uh, click this uh, right value. So now we load the part and then I will palm this button. And after this, every two seconds, the sequence will move to the next step. So we'll see now it's climbing this housing. Now it's a price, this housing. Now the clamps is opened. And now it's heating. It will wait for 10 seconds. In the meantime, I will scroll this uh, programming here. So we can see it's waiting for this uh, 10 seconds expire and move to the 30. Okay, turn on, it's moved to the 30. We reach to the 30 and it's go back to home. And because the palm out button is still on, so, so it's keep going and run the second cycle. But in actual case, we will not turn this uh, palm out button on continuously. Basically, we just uh, trigger this uh, palm out button or hold just uh, one or two seconds. So I should turn this uh, palm out button to off and leave this uh, part present off. 
So we can see with this uh, sequence step description, it's clear allows us to know what the current step it add. Okay. Now let's run this again. Let me present this housing in and let's palm out this button. Okay, after it's moved, I will turn this off. Okay, it's moved to number five. It's at a 10, climbing the housing. Okay, price the housing. Okay, open the clamp and go into heat. Heat for 10 seconds. D and uh, C, they all at work position. After 10 seconds, so it's reached to the 30 and 30 will go back. So now it's at an initial start. Once it's go back to zero, now it's waiting for the new palm out button to turn on. Basically demonstrate if we load a new housing part in the machine, it's waiting for the operator palm out the button initiate or start this sequence again. Okay, let me demonstrate one fold scenario. For example, if I go to the valve simulation, so if we give a C work command, in actual case, if we fire this valve C go work, so basically maybe half seconds or maybe one seconds, this valve reach at work position, which will be fine. But in case this valve got something wrong, stuck somewhere, it cannot do its job properly. So maybe this is work sensor got something wrong. That means once we fire go work command, this at work sensor cannot feedback on results. So how we can diagnose this? This is a very common case in the actual machine. I will comment this line out, basically demonstrate this at work sensor for C cannot work properly. And let me demonstrate how we can use this sequence to diagnose, to trace down where we can find out the problem comes from. Okay, firstly, let me comment out this line. Demonstrate the valve C at work sensor got something wrong. And I will close this. Now we will assume we do not know the something wrong from C there. Okay, let me fire this uh, sequence control. Okay, let me pump out this uh, sequence. Okay, this sequence start. Let's go to price this uh, housing. And we found the machine stuck there cannot move forward. So how can we diagnose, right? So now with this uh, step number or with this uh, step description, we can quickly find out where we can go to troubleshoot. The best way is look at this uh, sequence number 15. We know the machine cannot move forward. It stopped at this uh, 15. So we can scroll down, find out 15 and check out what's going on for this step 15. What the condition cannot meet doesn't allow this uh, step move forward to 20. So this is that condition, right? Task down. So we can see this is the, the logic. Valve A at home sensor, no problem. So this sequence is waiting for the valve C at work. So that means the valve C got something wrong. This at sensor cannot turn on. Then this time we can go to the valve control. We can check out if the C is uh, controlled properly. So we find out C control logic and find out now the sequence is at 15. This 15, this if is true. So the valve C is controlled go to work. However, from this sequence control, this valve C at work sensor cannot give a feedback, which means the system fires this C go work, but the clamp may be stuck somewhere and the clamp cannot reach at work position. So the sensor cannot turn on, or maybe the sensor got something wrong or maybe the wire already broken. So using this way, we can quickly diagnose and uh, trace down where the problem comes from. That is the beauty of this uh, condition. If we are using the conditions, but just by using this uh, signals, if the machine stop in the middle, 
without using this sequence, it's really hard to diagnose what's going on in the machine, what the current condition, what the next the machine need to move forward. It's hard to diagnose or hard to figure out. Using this sequence number, it's very easy for us to diagnose what the current condition of this machine, where we should diagnose. Basically, once the machine stops in the middle of the sequence, the first thing we need to check out, that is the sequence control. Check out what the current number in the machine in this sequence and check out what the current conditions is stuck there. For example, this is a 15. We check out it stopped at a 15 and what the condition cannot turn on doesn't allow this step move forward. We can quickly check out which condition doesn't meet. All right, that is the sequence control. Let's do a quick wrap up. In this video, I used the TwinCast 3, this software, and used the case of this instruction to implement the sequence control and use this housing assembling case as our actual case. I demonstrate how can we use the sequence control to control the cylinder A, B, C, D, these four cylinders. And basically, when we program the automatic sequence control, there will be two main parts. The first part that is the sequence control, there's a sequence control structure. And in each step, we have a conditions to move to the next step. And between the steps, we have a timer in the between. So we can control the timer, control the interval time. And that is the fixed structure. If you need to use this structure, this sequence structure to apply for other applications, you can use a similar structure and a copy paste use the different sequence control structure. And to control the different wall bank, we better draw a timing chart like this, or that timing chart like this. Basically, you separate this timing into individual steps and mark the different steps. Regarding the case of the instruction, the zero represent the initial status, and after this, we add a five for each step. For each step, for individual step, their structure, they almost the same. Firstly, I will prefer to use this string description to describe the current step, what it's doing. It's a production oriented. And at this common, I will comment what the main role of this step. And this line, that is the condition, uh, use the common logic, for example, and or, or some complex logic to involve together to control this step to move to the next step. And using this number, we can quickly find out currently like this, we are stuck at a 15 and find out what the reason doesn't allow this step 15 move forward, right? And keep in mind, at the beginning of this uh, sequence, we need to do some initial status like this. Uh, we need to uh, at home check out status or we need to check out the palm out button. Also, we can initial some status. Same idea, at the end of this sequence, we can also initial something because this is at the end of this sequence, we can send all the cylinders, all the actuators go back home or go to zero speed. So basically, calm down the machine and allow the machine prepare to the new step. And regarding the automatic control logic for different for individual cylinder or actuator, we will use this step number to control the objects or control the cylinders. If we go to the valve control, for different valve, we will use this step number. Use equal or use greater than equal or less than equal. Take care, sometimes we need a or, sometimes we need a and for the range control. So use it this way, we can turn on or turn off some control command to control the objects or control the actuators. So using this way, here is very clean. We can quickly find out so which step number controls this device. We can quickly trace down what the source to control this valve go work or go home. All right, that is for this topic. I used two videos to introduce this sequence structure and the valve control using this sequence number. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.